Hey folks, uh, week 23 here with uh, TJ on uh, Men's Room F2M. Um, topic today is the trans community and more specifically about uh, resources, groups, uh, conferences, uh, that kind of stuff um, available for uh, the trans community and my experience with them. Um, in terms of conferences, I've been, uh, I've been to a few, uh, both trans specific but also just queer in general. Um, the, the one that comes uh, most to mind right now is uh, called Gender Odyssey. It is um, once a year over Labor Day weekend in uh, Seattle. And I have to say, so far from the conferences that I've been to, um, I have found that to be the most affirming um, experience that I've had um, at trans-specific conferences. Um, it's, uh, it's definitely not as well attended as it could be because it's in Seattle, Washington, um, kind of in the corner there. Uh, but uh, having said that, uh, be despite its location, it's, um, there's quite a diversity of, of people that show up to that. Um, they do a really, really good job of, uh, of reaching out to a, uh, to a very diverse population within the trans community, uh, both in terms of uh, gender identification um, and, and race, um, and also uh, folks from Canada. Um, so there's, there's, some, uh, there's some of that. And there's definitely a lot of work still. Um, as with every conference, as with every organization, there's still a, a ton of work to make sure that folks are being outreached to, especially for folks who can't afford to, uh, these, uh, to go to these spaces. Um, another one, I think, is uh, the Translating Identity Conference uh, that I've mentioned on my personal channel before. Uh, this is a great uh, student-led conference, and it's at the University of Vermont. It's actually coming up soon um, on October 24th. Uh, you should check it out. Um, and register for it if you'd like. Um, it's a one-day, uh, all-day Saturday conference, and, and uh, like I said, it's completely student-led and organized, which is fantastic. Uh, they do a great job with it, um, and folks should definitely uh, check that out if they're in the area or are able to to get to it. Um, other than that, in terms of events, I've um, I had the an amazing, amazing luck of being in San Francisco uh, the the weekend of, of Pride a few years ago, and there is a Trans Pride March, and I had never seen anything like this before in my life. Um, the The Pride that I've been to the most has been Michigan Pride, uh, both in Lansing and in uh, the Motor City, uh, and the 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 Lansing March. I mean, it's it's definitely got a crowd there, but um, in comparison it, it, to the Trans Pride March in San Francisco, it, it pales um, in number and impact um, that that it had on me. Um, it's it was it was huge. Uh, it was such an amazing experience to see the sea, uh, this whole entire street of people, uh, whether trans identified or allied. Uh, or gender queer or anything across the gender spectrum, uh, just uh, you know, walking and rolling in unison um, and making uh, making themselves look, you know, appear visible to to the rest of the world. It was it was just really really powerful. Uh, so I'd, I'd have to say like that was that was very very unique for me. Um, I hope to to make it down again uh, sometime in the future and uh, uh, see see that all over again. It was just it was great. Um, and the and the march itself was uh, preceded by um, performances on stage, a picnic, that kind of thing. So it was cool to just uh, sit on the grass on what was a beautiful day and just socialize with folks. Um, it was just it was great. Um, other than that, I'm trying to think of other um, other stuff. Well, at uh, Michigan State, um, my best friend and I started a group uh, for students. Um, called transaction um, and so that that was there for us um, ended up being more like we were the facilitators of uh, of the support group we tried to create for us um, which you know it, it was what it was but yeah um, since we started it people look look to us more to be the supporters versus the ones that were seeking it um, which again like I said it is what it is uh, but I got a lot out of it um, anyway um, I've been to 
uh, a group here in in Burlington. I I went to um, a meeting once uh, last year. Um, it really wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. Um, it seems like a good group for the folks that are in it. Um, they seem to get a lot out of it. I I didn't really feel like um, there was much of a connection for me there. Um, but I also haven't made an effort to, to go again and see again. Um, and that's more to do with just being really, really busy with my job and not having the time to do that, not having the time to invest into seeing if this is something that is for me. So it might be, it might, it might have been just that one meeting, but um, I just, I don't have the time for it. Um, and in terms of what kind of stuff I would love uh, to have access to here, um, I think especially especially being in Burlington, Vermont, um, where you know the white the second widest state in the country, um, I would want to be um, be able to have real discussion uh, with with other trans men in particular um, around around race, around privilege, uh, whiteness, and um, and all those pieces, but also around privilege, around maleness, um, and how. Uh, unique that is for, uh, uh, when it comes to us and um, how we still embody it and uh, still perpetuate it in our own ways. Um, but obviously a lot more complicated of a conversation uh, than uh, for cisgender men or um, folks who've uh, experienced maleness in a very, very different way than us. Um, so that's that, That's the kind of thing I really wish um, was around. I. Um, I also know that there's a quite quite a vibrant um, youth and student community um, around uh, both transness and just gender variance in general, um, and the, the there is the space for that here at the university. Uh, but because of my uh, my job, uh, me being an employee and a staff member, um, while those resources are technically accessible to me and I could go to them. Um, it's a it's a line and a boundary that I am not comfortable crossing with students, um, and not really willing to seek out support from students that I'm supposed to be supporting, and so I I don't utilize um, I don't utilize them as as a support system. Uh, so I kind of wish there was something more in place for staff. Um, having said that, I don't know any other staff members um, on campus that identify as trans, so I don't know who would be other than myself. Uh, so I kind of wish there was uh, better outreach to to increase um, staff member numbers, um, and then a space for staff to get together. Um, I love that I can get together with my uh, queer colleagues and um, find some uh, support and allyship there, um, but I would like more than that. Um, I uh, I know. There's again, like I said, there's a there's a community around, but I I would say I would only consider uh, one person to to really be um, a friend who I see semi regularly um, that I can just you know go out with and, and and conversate with and have a real relationship with. There's definitely other folks around that I that I see and um, appreciate their their company when I get to have it and and all of that stuff. Um, but I would just I would, I would really love to see the numbers in, in my age group and people who really are interested in talking about um, uh, identity dynamics and not just about like you know when are we going to have surgery and um, who did I have surgery with and all that stuff like that's not that's not all I want to talk about so um, but yeah uh, that's about it um, if folks know of other resources around I'd love to hear it. Um, uh, um, hopefully wherever you all are, uh, you're finding what you need and um, it is exactly what you're looking for. Take care.